Welcome to Palm Sunday Online Service. As we gather here to worship God, we acknowledge we are on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of Maiti. We respect the sacredness of our shared home and the ground on which we walk, and we are grateful for its stewardship through the centuries. The peace of Christ be with you all. Christian traditions have observed the sixth Sunday of Lent as Palm Sunday since a long time ago. Why do Christians call it Palm Sunday? The Gospel of Matthew describes others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Mark David, others spread leafy branches that had cut in the fields, and Luke does not even mention any branches. However, particularly, John specifies that the branch were from palm trees and many Christians have believed them those were palm branches and named today Palm Sunday. Again, why palm branches? There should be a reason behind that. The range of palms inhabitants covers all kinds of land. Palms inhabit everywhere, not only in tropical areas or rainforest, but also in desert. In many places, palm trees have been used as common products and food. Palms have been a symbol for resilient and abundant life for a long time. For example, Psalm 92.12 says, The righteous flourish like the palm tree. Also, the book of Judges tells us the prophet Deborah used to sit on the palm of Deborah between Lama and Bethel in the, in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites came up to her for judgment. Also, Ezekiel saw a vision of the shape of a palm tree on the door of the holy place. Likewise, palm trees are the symbol of sacredness, justice, righteousness in the Hebrew scripture. So, on the first Palm Sunday, the description of gospel, the children and crowds held palm branches and spread them on the road, indicates who Jesus was. Jesus was like a palm tree. Jesus is resilient. Jesus is righteous and just. That's why, in ancient times, people waved palm branches and shouted out, Hosanna! Hosanna meant save us. While people were shouting, Hosanna, save us, they were expressing their hope. So, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for your redemption of the word through Jesus Christ. Today, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along His way. Let these branches be signs of His victory, and grant them that we who carry them may follow Him in the way of the cross, that dying and rising with Him we may enter into your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, who reaps and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Now let us listen to a proclamation of the entrance into Jerusalem. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of the Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! 
When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. As we remember the only followers of Jesus who welcomed Christ in the city and shouted out, Hosanna! Let us join the procession into the church, singing Voices United 128, Sana Sanania. Sana is an African version of Hosanna. I'd like to ask you uh, to bring your clothes or uh, pick up the branches in your backyard and waving it while we're singing and entering into the sanctuary. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Yet still, Jesus was not recognized for who he was, for the transformation he was to bring. When we forget to love, we are slowly plunged into deep shadows of despair. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, my love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger. And I have promised, promised to be always near. When we dismiss our commitment to relationship, we abandon who we are created to be. When we fall prey to greed and conflict, 
we become those who would snuff out the light of the word. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, my love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, and I have promised, promised to be always near. When we lack the courage of our faith, we allow more of the hatred and injustice in the world to dominate. When we lose hope in God's promises, we become those who would shut out the light. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, my love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid, my love stronger and I have promised, promised to be always near. Let us pray. Let the same mind be in us as was in Christ Jesus. Let your word be in our hearts as it was in Christ Jesus. Amen. The scripture reading is Psalm 118. Let Israel now say, God's love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, God's love endures forever. Let those who fear God say, God's love endures forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Open to me the gates of the temple, that I may enter and give thanks to God. This is the gate of God, through it the righteous shall enter. I thank you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is God's doing, marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Save us, O God, we pray. God, we pray, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. We bless you from the house of God. God, our God, has given us light. With palm branches in hand, let us march to the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Next scripture is Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself to be, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name Jesus Every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the witness of the Church. Thanks be to God. Hosanna means save us. Two thousand years ago, 
people in Jerusalem shouted out to Jesus on a donkey, Hosanna, save us. The full gospel depicts it as a triumphal entry to Jerusalem. Let us imagine Jesus was sitting on a humble donkey and was surrounded by a bunch of low-life Jewish people holding palm branches and shouting Hosanna. How can it be referred to as a triumphal entry? Excited children and crowd wanted to celebrate his entry to the city, but they have nothing but their own clothes and tree branches on the road. Jesus' entry to Jerusalem was probably not a spectacular parade. Jesus' entry would have been insignificant and even poor compared to that of Pontius Pilate. When Pontius Pilate entered into Jerusalem, it must have been great. It must have been incredible. As the great Roman Empire's representative, Pilate probably would have ridden a magnificent war horse. Tons of heavily armed force followed him. Big banners and colorful flags kept flying endlessly along the procession. Pilate military parade made it crystal clear who was in charge. There is no ruler like him in the area. Pilate is the person with all real power who came in the name of the emperor, Pax Romana. The great Roman Empire ruled. No one could dare deny that. At some point, a rumor that Prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee would visit Jerusalem began circulating. When Jesus and his disciples showed up near the city, a very large crowd gathered. They spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the tree and spread them on the road. The crowd that went ahead of him and followed him shouted out, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Their shouting of Hosanna reflected their subversive yearnings. We are doomed. This word needs to be changed. Or enough is enough. They were yearning for radical change. They desired the word upside down. Injustice and oppression should end. Death and pain must be stopped. They were hoping for God's reign to come. The novel coronavirus outbreak has shown that today's neoliberalized world needs to be changed, radically upside down. Our neighbor to the south is one and only undisputable superpower in, in our times, just like the Roman Empire in the ancient times. They spent $684 billion on military expenditure yearly, which means they spend more money on military than the next 12 nations combined. However, now the United States has become the new center of global pandemic with over 200,000 cases. More than, more than China or Italy. Why are they exceptionally vulnerable to COVID-19? This is because they do not have a universal public health care system. Tons of military resources for defense and security cannot prevent the spread of COVID-19. What saves people's lives is not killing power, but life-giving power. This is not about just one country. From 2011 to 2018, the European Commission recommended 63 times that each of 28 countries in the EU should reduce public health expenses and privatize healthcare section in order to improve sustainability of public finances.
Many countries have followed this recommendation and sold the sold public facility to private shareholders. Now, because of this kind of privatization measure, Italy, Spain, many other countries have been impacted severely in this COVID-19 pandemic. This is not a matter just one country. In this global age, we are all interconnected. The whole socio-economic system of this world has failed to save people's lives. A world where profits are regarded as more important than people should be changed. Jesus riding a humble animal instead of grand war halls showed this life-giving power. A donkey does not fit with a conquest and wars. The peace of Christ is not like the Pax Romana. It's different. He is the king of true peace. When he was entering Jerusalem, actually, he was going to Golgotha. His triumphal entry ends up with his cross. What the world would see is just pitiful or helpless death. What the followers of Jesus see is that his entry is his love for the world. Therefore, Christian traditions have to refer to Palm Sunday as Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. On the first Palm Sunday, Jesus was surrounded by people who welcomed him as the king who comes in the name of the Lord. They followed him. Palm Sunday was not Jesus' one-man show. People who received him as Christ were with him. This triumphal entry would end soon. His disciples were clueless as usual. They would flee or betray Jesus in the next few days. And yet, not all followers abandoned them or escaped. On the first Good Friday, a great number of people, especially women, who wept and mourned for Jesus' crucifixion, followed him. But they had to watch his death helplessly. We may also experience numerous frustrations and failures while we follow Jesus' way. We all know that this cross was not the end. God raised him up again on the third day. And Jesus once again invited and encouraged his friends to carry on. Jesus is calling us to the hope of resurrection and asking us to remember his passion and remember the ongoing passion of humanity. Those who today are dying, who are oppressed, who suffer injustice. This coming Holy Week, while we may stay home physically, Spiritually, we should move towards Jerusalem. We need to keep learning how to rely on God's grace to carry us every step of the way. Now, let us take a moment of silent reflection. On this Palm Sunday, like the only followers, how can we make a way for Jesus? And how can we accept him as Christ?
Now, let us pray. We pray for the powerless in our world, the hungry, the intimidated, and the exploited poor here and in countries far from here. We pray for those who are working to end this unprecedented COVID-19 outbreak, those who are inventing the vaccine and cure, those who are suffering at home or in hospital, and especially those around the world without home or health care. God, our helper, our wisdom, our God, journey with us into the streets of Jerusalem. May we not be tempted by power and greed, keep us focused on love and compassion, rather than the evils of indifference and dominion. Point us to the cross of acceptance and forgiveness. Following the prayer cycle for churches in this Living Skies region, we pray for churches in Springwater, Star City, Strasbourg, and Swift Current. Grant them the grace and strength that they may be salt and light in their place. Now we continue to pray through Jesus our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Mother and our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The dying is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of God uphold you, the peace of God surround you, the love of God flow from you and to you. May the strength of God protect you and bring you safely through this day and all days. And may your fear flee with the strength of our gathered faith. Amen. Now let us join to sing closing hymn, More Voices 214, May God's Sheltering Wings. Girl. 